Welcome back to Beards and Brews. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you know when we have another one brewing. This week's movie needs no introduction, but it is Jurassic Park. Fellas, hold on to your butts. I didn't this even remember the- Samuel L. Jackson was in this movie, by the way. Sam Jackson is in this. Yeah, he's in every movie, ever. It's a fucking Jurassic-sized F.U. to lawyers. <laughs> Yeah, this movie's kind of, like, ridiculously mean to that one fella. Goodness. Him and his safari shorts. Everyone's wearing safari shorts, and I get it. They look comfy. They look fun. I'd wear safari shorts. Only Muldoon deserves to wear them. Uh, Listen, if Laura Dern wants to wear safari shorts, she can do whatever she pleases. (laughs) But have you seen those Muldoon gams? Damn! (laughs) Bro, when he steps out with that fucking shoddy... It's just like thighs for days. I was like, bro does not skip leg day. (laughs) He's hanging out with raptors all day. He's getting in their minds, starts hopping around too. Yeah, I'll tell you, like, whenever he started to be more in the movie, I was like, wait, who's this guy? Like, I I forgot about his existence altogether until he's actually a part of the movie. Okay. He's he's the kind of guy that you definitely want to see come back in the franchise. And you're like, I don't know how, but do it. Stop me if I'm, if I'm too far off. Muldoon, legs for days, right? The reason he did this is because right as the movie starts, that fucking, you know, migrant worker gets killed and he wants revenge. So he's like fucking leg pressing 900 pounds and he straps on a metal blade to each foot to go have a kick battle with the queen raptor. How do you know this is a migrant worker? We, we start out in Costa Rica and he looks Latino. He could just be Costa Rican. He'd be moving around. Okay, so you, think this, so you think this guy has like a Colombian like cocaine cartel side hustle? That's a really big side hustle. Fuck. <laughs> fucking stuffing cocaine in the fucking Velociraptor's butts. <laughs> oh, that's what's in his legs. Fucking cocaine. <laughs> Just pop Smuggling that bitch right bricks. Oh, so our introduction to this movie is like we just see this scene, you know, there's cranes and shit, forklifts. We're organizing this big thing. We don't know what it is. We don't see anything. There's a cage. And then a motherfucker gets just eaten. Definitely and chewed, not swallowed, chewed. It's one of those things where, like, the worst, <laughs> it's the worst thing imaginable. Yeah, it's the worst thing that could possibly happen. Because, like, everything is secure. These guys have it under control. You just need to put this box right here. Whatever's in the box goes over there. Easy. And it just all fucking falls apart. And he just gets eaten. Last day before retirement, of course. Getting too old for this shit. He was going home to his wife and kids after this with all the $10 we were going to pay him. <laughs> Probably just going to pay him and cocaine him. Cocaine him. Just opens up one quad muscle and Wait. is like, take a sniff, it's pure. Yeah, he's got the fucking leg thing like Robocop. Wait, is <laughs> cocaine him? Is that a new, uh, a new cryptocurrency? Can I invest in that? Oh, man. Is that up on Robinhood? Cool. Dude, that, there is no crypto about that currency, sir. Everyone knows you can get what you want with the cocaine. The cocaine, man. <laughs> but yeah, like, shit hits the fan so abruptly, but then the movie's like, guess what? We're in Africa. Whoa! <laughs> Diamond farming or whatever. No, no, that's Dominican Republic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but this is our introduction to, like, this uh, lawyer businessman guy. He He ends up being a part of the story for a while. That's really all we need. It's mm-hmm. lawyer, businessman, guy, and there's a mosquito in some amber that they find. That'll yeah. come back, right? Yeah, a lot of iconic stuff just, like, perks up just immediately in the movie. You got the mosquito and the amber, and you, they try to explain who Hammond is, the rich guy who wants to fund this park. And you get this, like, little inkling of who he is. You know, maybe he's not just an entrepreneur, but, you know, a little extra something special. Maybe that's he spares no expense. I think he spares no expense. And I think if he lived in 2020 or 2021, he wouldn't have made Jurassic Park. He would just go to space. Oh, no. He's got a dick rocket in his backyard. Well, you know, he's got all that money just because his brother's doing all them fucking voiceover works. Oh, yeah, that's uh, uh, Richard Attenborough. It's one of the Attenboroughs. I I know it's one of the Attenboroughs. I don't know how many there are, but this is one of them for sure. So one's an educator, one's just like a really rich Santa Claus. (laughs) What do you want for Christmas, children? You're not getting it because that cuts into my profit. 
<laughs> we got Dave and Dick the Attenboroughs. Oh, man. So this whole thing was just to knock off those grandkids or whatever? It's like, you're not getting any of this shit when I die. <laughs> it's just a way to kill the lawyer. The blood-sucking lawyer. I do have a lot of leftover <laughs> Jurassic Park merchandise. You can have it. There's so much. If it were any other movie, it'd be so almost disgusting. But seeing all that Jurassic Park shit in Jurassic Park, I'm like, man, I kind of want some of that. Give me that okay. lunchbox. The fucking product placement is brilliant because it's not like Coca-Cola. It's literally Jurassic Park plugging itself. Well, there was a Jolt Cola pretty clearly in there. You guys remember Jolt? I do remember Jolt Cola. Was it like an RC it's, adjacent or something? It's definitely pre-Vault. Is it um, before or after? Uh, what's that other one that came in a green can with a little splashy Surge? thing on it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jolt, if I remember right, is closer to like Dr. Pepper, but it had more caffeine in it. And also it uh, tasted real bad. Yeah, you can't have your sodas tasting like fucking dino butthole. Unless you're into that. I don't know. Maybe there's a market. You know who's into dino's buttholes and pelvic bones? Fucking <laughs> Dr. Grant. Hell yeah. And Laura Dern. I don't know what her character's name is. She's just Laura Dern. Like um, I mix and match throughout. It's Laura Dern and Dr. Grant. Uh, Doc, yeah, Dr. Dern, whatever. It doesn't Dr. matter. Dern. They're over there with bones to pick. Doc yeah, mixed stuffed into them shorts. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, our, our introduction to them takes place in Montana. They're on a dig site. They're finding this fucking velociraptor skeleton underground. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. They're pretty psyched about it. I would be yeah. too. It, it's kind of this weird thing, right? So like, they're arch archaeologists. They're digging up the skeleton. Paleontologists. Like, hey. And they're like, yeah, we did a cool thing. And this other guy's like, man, I don't want to fucking dig. I'm just going to shoot the fucking ground. <laughs> on the TV, look, I fucking got him. He's dead. <laughs> He's deader than dead. You know what's better than dead, dead dinosaurs? Traumatizing children. Yeah, fuck that kid. Fuck that kid hard. I don't like that kid. Why is he even there? Yeah. Well, he's definitely like the kid of like a paleontologist or scientist is just there for the fucking weekend or his parents are divorced and one of them is a paleontologist and he has to stick around for the summer with nothing better to do. Can't afford to go to camp because they don't pay him that much because all this is basically just funding from wherever. So, yeah, fuck that kid. He's probably yep. like prepubescent Paul Reiser. Fuck him. Uh, it's just a big turkey. And then Dr. Grant's like, it's a big turkey. It's going to fucking kick your guts out and then eat you while you scream. And the kid's Look, like, <laughs> While I was watching, I didn't realize, like, the stance Dr. Grant had when he walked up to him. I thought he was just going to just wail on him with a haymaker. Just, just like, like <laughs> listen here, you little shit. You ever seen a turkey in the wild? They will fuck you up. I'm going to put you in the ground. I'm going to dig you back up, put you in a fucking museum. <laughs> While this is going on, there's this old ass motherfucker ranging around in, uh, in their trailer, just like popping open bottles of champagne. Like, hey, we yeah. did it. Now, how did he get there? Think about that. They're at the dig site. Helicopter lands. They're like, no, oh, cover the bones. And they run directly to the helicopter. Tell the guy to turn it off. Somehow oh. in that three second interval, good old Hammond is just like teleported into their trailer. I got you. Hammond drove there 20 minutes earlier and has just been rummaging through their shit. <laughs> and the chopper's there to pick him up. Yeah, the helicopter's just a distraction. But yeah, and like, I really enjoy that he's like, ah, I'm here to hire you. And he's like, what's your name? He's like, ah, I'm Alan Grant. He goes, more like Alan Grant money. Get my chopper. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, he walks in, sees Hammond. He's like, I just punched a kid. I'll punch you too. What are you doing in my place? <laughs> he's like, no, 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 no. Here, I'm making it rain. He's like, oh, boy, I love you. And then Laura Dern runs in with the same face. Like, I'm going to kick your ass. Money in her face. Oh, boy, you're such a swell guy. It's okay, I assure you, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Here's some money. Oh, shit. But he gets him in there, but like he's like, ah, oh, one rule about coming to my park. And they're like, oh, what's that? And he's like, you gotta say fuck lawyers. And he's like, no, <laughs> fuck lawyers. Cut <laughs> to my favorite fucking scene. Like, there's a million lines in this movie, but this one I have repeated more than any. We get Dennis Nedry, uh, the fat guy, Newman, from Seinfeld. And he is sitting at a table, and this dude is walking up with this little straw hat looking like fucking Agent 47 just <laughs> yeah. off some tourist. Well, Newman himself looks like the biggest fucking tourist this side of Costa Rica. Goodness. <laughs> the man is clearly like a 
5X t-shirt wearing guy, brilliantly bright Hawaiian type shirt, and he's just wolfing down pie slices like it's no tomorrow. I don't blame him at all. If I was in Costa Rica and I was on vacation doing whatever, I would, yeah, no, that's me. I would be doing that. Dude, if I was one of the waiters serving this fella, I'd be really hard pressed to get close to him because I would lose a fucking thing. <laughs> you could By eat the way, when it's done, but there's never anything left. <laughs> By the way, one small little uh, qualm that I have with this, just a little, you know, geographic anachronism, if you will. When we we come into the scene, it clearly says San Jose, Costa Rica. We pan over to Newman on the beach eating whatever he's eating. San Jose is not on the beach. San Jose is in the middle of the fucking country. There's no beach. I mean, I think it's like San Jose implied. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) It's just San Jose by default. That's the only city in Costa Rica anybody knows. So obviously it's just San Jose. Oh, it's the beat. I think they mean Sand Jose. Sandy Jose. What you don't notice is a tiny arrow pointing at one of the fellows on the beach. That's Jose. (laughs) So (laughs) my favorite line is there's the guy there and he's like, oh, over here, Dotson. He's like, don't don't say my name out loud. And he goes, Dotson, we got Dotson here. See, nobody cares. And that has... (laughs) been so useful to my life when people are like oh man just chill out chill out whatever i'm like draw attention to whatever the situation is and then escalate again and go see nobody cares herpes i got herpes see nobody cares pounds, a couple more slices of pie for the record i don't have herpes we'll see see no one cares so what's this meeting all about turns out that uh nedry works for hammond he's the guy that programmed all of jurassic park all the three million lines of code it's all him. He's responsible for the entire place working autonomously. Fine, whatever. He's got some cash issues, and Ham is just like, I'm going to pay you what I'm going to pay you. Get fucked. So I guess he made some kind of deal with some kind of uh, third-party competitor or whatever. So his job is to take all the dinosaur embryos off the island. So Mr. 47 Agent Man gives him a, a barbersaw can. Shaving cream, but it's not just any can of shaving cream. Inside it is a protective little thing where he can put the embryos, snatch them, get them off the island, and he gets like a million billion dollars for it. Fresh shave America, fresh shave Barbasol. Sponsor us. <laughs> now, his but, thing is, you gotta sneak it all out. And he's like, I got this. And guess what? He puts Yay. that can of Barbasol right up his butthole? <laughs> yeah, he does. He puts yeah. it under and his butthole. And then he goes, that's a, that's a... <laughs> But did you guys like how he takes off Dodson's hat? And he's like, well, you trying to like look like a tourist? No, bro. That motherfucker was trying to hide that giant ass forehead under there. That's like oh, a six head. That poor guy. Okay, the guy just by himself looks kind of like, uh, like what's his name? Ryan Gosling, you know, a generally attractive looking guy. But then he's like got an extra Ryan Gosling on top of his head. <laughs> oh, that's his brother receding Gosling. It, oh, it, he looks like Peyton Manning. <laughs> God damn it. He makes the fucking dude pay his bill. Yeah, he's a. Uh, you do get that inkling that, you know, Nedry's a cunt. He's, he's just a big old fat cunt. Yeah, he's kind of a cunt. Quick cut, and guess who we got? Motherfucking Jeff Goldblum, the horny rock star. <laughs> yeah, I like how the movie spends no time showing where he came from. He's just on the helicopter. Yep, the uh, attorney brought him. I don't know where the attorney found him, but he's just like this chaos theory professor or something i don't know it's one of those things where i'm sure it's real but it just sounds real fake <laughs> but the fact that the lawyer found him it probably just turned out to like he got into a cab too quick and had to share it with him and the whole time he's just like <laughs> and he's like okay, okay. He's- you're doing the laugh and it's like flawless <laughs> this motherfucker has this shitty and gr- mischievous <laughs> grin the entire movie because he saw Laura Dern's shorts. That's all he's looking at the whole time, just staring her down. Sam Neill's like giving him the death stare. like, that's my woman. Oh, I'm going to punch yeah. you like that kid I did. And like every time they're in a scene together, he has like an opportunity to have like a little flirtation with her. I mean, okay, credit to Sam Neill because, or Dr. Graham, because he doesn't seem annoyed about it. Because I guess, you know, dick game too strong, to whatever. <laughs> Even later on in the movie, he's like, hey, he's a... Uh... Is uh, Hot Shorts available or anything? Got her number or something? I do have her number, actually. It's in my phone under girlfriend. I don't I don't know. Do no, they have no. phones? Is this too early? He, this is 93. Dude, the guy doesn't even know how to fucking buckle a seatbelt. Oh, my God. 
Okay. He doesn't know how to buckle it, but once he ties it and gives like the fuck you head nod, I I did laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it makes you laugh even harder when you realize I think he stole Laura Dern's like female half so she couldn't buckle herself up. He's like, look, one of us is living. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh. so the reason this lawyer is coming in, he, we're all riding in on a helicopter to this island that's 120 miles or whatever off the coast of Costa Rica. The reason the lawyer is coming in, the whole point, is he needs to give his approval that this thing is okay, and he's got the two, like, paleontology experts coming in to say, like, hey, yeah, this is cool. What we're doing here, it's okay, and I'm sure everything's going to be okay. High five. And then credits. There it was. That was Jurassic Park. Turns out everything was not okay. Oh, spoilers. Mm. The chopper lands, and they jump in fucking branded-ass jeeps, which look badass, mind you. And we get our first treat. A dinosaur. And this is the point where the, the score just swells. Who did the score, by the way? John Williams. Remember, he did a Star War. I think he's going to have a good career ahead of him. I don't know. But yeah, it just swells when we first time, the first time that we see these dinosaurs, they're what, brachiosauruses or something. And it's yeah. just so filling. I don't know. Yeah, it's super iconic, too, because they roll up to the tall bitch and like, I guess they didn't <laughs> see it because they're too busy just looking at leaves or what the fuck ever. Mm -hmm. And it's just the perfect, perfect character reaction. You know, like Grant is just like in disbelief. Ian Malcolm. He's Jeff Goldblum. And yeah. then, like, that moment, <laughs> and, and that moment where, like, he takes Laura Dern's head and just, like, fucking look. You know, it just all comes together in this really satisfying scene. You're in as much disbelief as they are. Yeah, yeah. And I do really like how he just, like, grabs a hold of her head and turns it. I thought that he was going to, like, reach her head up through, like, the top of the Jeep and be like, hey. But I guess that would have been a little bit too violent. <laughs> he just turns her head and stuffs his dick in her mouth, and he's just like... <laughs> This has been a fantasy of mine for years. <laughs> this is how I claim my property. Oonga boonga cake man. And of course, in the back of the Jeep, just say, <laughs> Yes, it's fucking flawless. And I like how John Hammond's like, we got dinosaurs. Oh, man, look at that fucking dinosaur. And he's like, we got a T-Rex. And he goes, why are we still here looking at this piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is old news already. Yeah, like... Yeah, you're exactly right. As soon as he mentions a T-Rex, Laura Dern just, like, starts panting, like, a T-Rex? And everyone just gets super dino horny from that point. <laughs> Shorts get extra constrictive. Like, Dr. Grant starts panting. Look, that dude almost lost consciousness. Like, he had to put his hands on his knees and sit down slowly, or else he was going to get knocked the fuck out. No, he's straight dino nutted at that point. <laughs> <laughs> was Fucking that? Lotosaurus. Was Next thing we know, we're back at uh, Jurassic Park HQ, the Jurassic Park uh, <laughs> HQ. Yeah, sure. HQ. I don't know yeah. what it is. It, it's the visitor center. But it's also, they have like science shit going on, right? I hope yeah. so. That fucking dinosaur's walking around. Fuck. Yeah, science shit. Can't be shit. an accident. This is when they walk through exactly how they did this. They did science shit. Yeah, they said, we made dinosaurs. And we get treated to a live tour that apparently John Hammond is going to give to every group of tourists that enters his fucking facility. Either that or they're going to like hire someone named John, so it's a little less weird, but it's whatever. Now, you can't clone it, John from John. They got plenty of mosquitoes. They can do whatever. <laughs> in any other movie, exposition is always kind of ham-fisted, mm -hmm. even in the best ways. But for some reason, this is fucking brilliant. They sit the characters down on a ride to explain the whole plot of the movie. And the whole cartoon Mr. DNA is amazing. He's so cool. I love that little dude. It's very conjunction junction or like, yes. I'm just a bill. You know, <laughs> I'm yeah. just Mr. DNA. I'm going to make sure everyone dies today. And it, it, you're right. It is brilliant in that, you know, we get to watch what the characters are watching but also, we get a little, you know, education, a little lesson on DNA as the viewer. So we know exactly what's going on here. It's a lot of fun. And they're so intrigued by what's going on, they break the goddamn ride <laughs> and sneak yeah, into the do. DNA facility itself to watch a baby raptor being born. Yeah, that's a one-star Yelp review from the fellas because <laughs> they're just like, fuck this place. I want to look at what's on the other side. 
Yeah, it's like a rotating sort of stage ride kind of thing. Mm. You know, yeah. like you would have at like Universal Studios or something. And, you know, we start to pass by the labs and old boy's like, wait, I want to go back there. What's all that science shit? No, yeah. no, I'm getting out. I need to see the science shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's so passionate about it. But, like, I don't blame him because, like, it's fucking lame. Like, okay, the cartoon's cool for the audience because you get to learn about the movie. But, like, if I were a patron and I paid $10,000 to come see a T-Rex and I have to sit down in this rotating restaurant bullshit, I'd lose my mind. Yeah. More T-Rex, less talkie talkie. <laughs> The next thing that I have is a quote that I can't really just pass by. It's we've got the lawyer talking to Mr. Hammond, you know, just trying to feel out exactly what we have here. And he's like, are these are these characters autoerotic? I think he was going for like autonomous or like whatever they use for the robot stuff in Disneyland. But yeah, the John Hammond or whatever his name is, is like, uh, no, we have no animatronics. Dumbass. You know why? Because <laughs> life uh, 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 finds a way. Even yeah, robots dude. start fucking in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't leave those robots alone. But yeah, there's there's no unauthorized breeding in Jurassic Park because they've bred them all to be female. That's that's how it is. But you're right but you, in that Dr. Ian Malcolm has his doubts. Yeah, he's. I want to say he's like the voice of reason, but he's so eccentric. You're just like, ah, Jeff Goldblum. I love it. Honestly, anytime Jeff Goldblum is on the screen, I am happy with it. Dude, his sexy pose throughout this entire fucking movie. Like, he is there to look <laughs> sleazy sexy. It's weird. And he's yeah, doing it, too. Weird. Yeah, we'll mention that a couple times further on in the movie. But uh, now he's just, like, sexily berating all the science around him. So, like, to go down, <laughs> check out the fucking raptor eggs. And, you know, this is amazing. This is a huge thing in the history of mankind. And yeah. he's just like, <laughs> this is all bullshit. Uh, you're just standing on the shoulders of the people who did it before you. And, uh... This ain't me. Peace. You're uh, uh, raping nature. Uh. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Licks, licks. Yeah, and he's absolutely right, but you cannot stop staring at his unbuttoned blouse. I know I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the look on the scientist's face around him because like he's just like putting this shit down left and right they're like this is our life's work <laughs> like what the fuck dude uh well hammond does give a good point he's like hey if we were resurrecting fucking california condors you wouldn't have a problem with it we'd be saving a species and he is like well yeah but god killed all these so he probably did it for a reason right yeah uh. yeah he's like you know nature selected them for extinction so when optimus prime was finally killed he never came back that just is what it is. And you I don't all... care if it's fucking coupon day or not. <laughs> he's like, fuck poor people. We need to make money. Yeah, the lawyer is like, hey, he's he's turning around. He's like, we could actually make a lot of fucking money off this. Uh, I should go ahead and contact my investors. Tell them yes. Well, let's press bye, on. Bye, here. bye, bye. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, bye, so. Meanwhile, the fucking other two uh, paleontologist people are like, uh, this is wild. It's really cool, but I don't know. <laughs> they were actually really stern about that because they were like, man, this is amazing, but you can't just do this. Like, you picked a plant because it looked pretty, but it actually eats children. Like, what are you doing here? Facts. Kids! <laughs> and fucking grandkids are here, and... The whole side story of Laura Dern's character and Alan Grant in this fucking scene is shown with just a glance. And I think it's some of the best chemistry you've ever seen on screen. She looks so glowing and happy that these children are there. And she glances to Alan and he kind of smiles at her, but just like, mm. There's another one yeah, of those she... scenes at the very end, too, where you just get like these looks and those looks say everything. Well, through the movie, she definitely wants a bun, and she wants him to put it in her. All that you need is a mosquito to bite him, and then, you know, you've got him on lock. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> I think she was thinking about his uh, proboscis. There was a joke there somewhere. You're talking about Dr. Grant's cloaca. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta lift up his scale to get at it. Oh, uh, no wonder he's so alpha around Ian. Uh. Is he? The guy is just, like, confident, you know? Like, he's trying to hit on Laura during, like, left and right. And he's just like, no, I already secured it. Try your best, buddy. Got to lock what, down. 
Is that what Sigma is? I've been hearing a lot about Sigma lately. I've heard about Ligma. What's Ligma? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ligma balls. <laughs> <laughs> got him. <laughs> Damn. Oh, you know man. what else got him? This storm that's brewing. Because they go on a fucking ride. And boy, oh boy. <laughs> Our first glance at what this amusement park truly offers is nothing. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like uh, going to, I remember Disney's Animal Kingdom. They have a little ride, like a little safari kind of thing that you can ride through. And like half the animals are just like, hey, there's uh, there's some elephant poop. The elephants are around here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just on lunch break or some garbage. <laughs> They're hiding because they don't like automobiles. Everything here is hyped, super hyped. So everyone's excited. They're like, hey, the Lopasaurus, take a look out of your window. They're like, yeah, where is it? They're like, huh? Fucking bullshit. When you think about it, though, this is the greatest idea ever. They're like, there's fucking dinosaurs out there. Did you see them? And they're like, no. And they're like, we didn't clone shit. There's fucking (laughs) nothing out there. Oh, man. So it's like that little flea thing he had early on. Like, my first attraction was a flea circus. You know, they weren't really fleas, but the kids would say up and down, like, they saw them. Wow, it's so cool. Maybe that was just shtick all along. He didn't really make a fucking thing. <laughs> like, I've heard of flea circuses, but I don't really understand how they work. Is it like a pet rock? Is it just like a psychosomatic thing? I don't know. It's all horseshit. Is this like some P.T. Barnum stuff? <laughs> they, like, whipping elephants? <laughs> When a uh, problem comes along, you must poison your triceratops. Fuck it. I don't even care. You gotta poison the triceratops. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, anyways, like, you know, disappointments in the air. But guess what? The next product is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is the big time. And there's like a 10,000 volt giant ass fence uh, going all the way around the exhibit. It seems pretty legit, right? And then, like, they, they stop for a moment so they can kind of get their bearing straight. And then there's a goat for feeding time. We're like, hell yeah, let's get this T-Rex out of here. And they're like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Ten minutes later, fuck. Yeah, we're still waiting on this T-Rex. You know what? We should just get out. We should get out the damn car. And you mentioned that the uh, the Jeeps in the beginning look pretty cool. Honestly, I was more into these uh, Ford Explorers. I don't know. Mm. might just be the color scheme. They definitely nah. look dino They look dino might. Might. They fucking jump out the cars and they go find a sick triceratops. And this is our first look at practical effect dino. And goddamn, does it look good? It looks really oh, yeah, good, absolutely. honestly. Like everything from like the overall reactions of the the actors and the actual piece itself is it's beautiful. Another iconic scene. You got like Dr. Grant, who's probably had this favorite dinosaur his entire life. It's not really said in any kind of dialogue, but he like comes up and he hugs it. And he, like, hears it breathing, and this is probably the best moment of his life or something like that. And you're like, wow, this is fantastic. Then you have Jeff Goldblum sexily walking up to a giant pile of shit. (laughs) Dude, that strut is fucking on (laughs) brand. It's so good. Iconic. Like, there's more steam coming off of him than there is the pile of shit. (laughs) (laughs) But I guess the whole point of this, plot-wise, is kind of split up the group. So... Everybody else piles into the explorers to just, you know, return back to wherever. Uh, Laura Dern gets separated and hangs with the scientists to take care of the the dinosaur, and she goes back to the compound. I guess that's a good point. I was kind of wondering, like, why would you do that? And then, okay, movie has to movie in some capacity. It can't just be, like, a group of six people all together, you know, encountering the same thing, because that's kind of a much easier fix if everybody's huddled together yeah it's just actually good storytelling there's actually a lot of points in this movie where just like if you were to pay attention a little extra you're like why but he know it no it's all in good fun now the storm is nearly there it's like knocking on the door and this is also prime time for dennis nedry to spring his escape slash theft the jurassic job this was his plan all along something he's been setting up for who knows how long, you know, just to wait for that fateful hurricane to just kind of wipe away any kind of trace of his wrongdoings or whatever. Yeah, another little thing that I have is like this is Costa Rica is still in the northern hemisphere. So if we're encountering a tropical storm in the Pacific Ocean, it's not generally going to go east. It's going to go west. So oh. why, is, why is this the happening? Hur- the hurricane thought you said west. I guess. So we got this tropical storm that's coming. 
And Wayne Knight is like, hey, I'm going to do some computer shit. I'm going to have about 20 minutes. I'm going to be able to sneak in there, steal some embryos, hide your kids, hide your wives, and hide your husband because Wayne Knight's stealing everybody in here. Uh, and he's super slimy about it. Like, up until then, he's kind of been kind of a dickhead towards Hammond, too. He's like, well, why don't you fucking pay me? He's like, your financial manager, none of my problem, blah, blah, blah. It's like, whatever, dad. And, like, like, as soon as he gets his uh, little plan going, he's like, he starts shaking, getting all nervous. Like, hey, yeah, 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 you want something, 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 something from the, uh, the snack machine? I'm just going to go to the snack machine. He's something salty. I have had so much sweet. That's all, folks. Yeah, but to be fair, Dr. Hammond spared no expense. Dang. So, I mean, I guess, except, except, except for, for the like, IT guy. Except for on actual security. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't even pay Nedry anymore. Like, he did spare that expense, to be honest, now that you bring it up. What a fucking hack. For real. Lying ass old bastard. And he's a bitch, too. <laughs> but while Dennis is in there getting his Barbasol haul, he's got, like, all the systems around the park failing. But the raptor fences, they're still on. Remember that. Now, yeah. Nedry jumps in a fucking Jeep to make his getaway, and he gets into the Dilophosaurus pen. Now, I know everyone's always talking about the fucking Velociraptor. And don't get me wrong, they're fucking cool. But to me, the Dilophosaurus, he's the fucking hero here. Is he the hero? Yes. Like, how do you work in a place and not know your way around? Like, I get it was rainy and he was trying to hurry and stuff like that, but clearly the arrow was pointing left. Come on, fellas. Maybe no, he's good with computers, but not cars. And not, I don't know. Maybe he's just bad at living. Not only that, but you watch him physically hey. open the gate to a dinosaur pen, drive inside of it, wreck, and then get out of his car. Nedry goes in, doesn't come out. You can't explain that. Yeah, I think I can explain it. He's not good at anything. He's real good at dying. Oh, Fuck yeah. He gets spat on and fucking et up by this thing that sounds like a rattlesnake mixed with something wow. from the Dooley's. That Look, was uh, the dude from Disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> like we're shitting on him pretty hard but like his ignorance towards the dinosaur is super super believable like he got this dinosaur almost looks like a dog and he's like hey fetch the stick you little fucking moron just go get it ah no wonder you extinct look he took that personally nah. yeah, uh, this is for those who don't know this is the the dinosaur that has like little frilly things on its neck when it gets upset and he spits like poison acid or something i don't know what yeah. it is but you yeah. don't want it in your face hole yeah, as the movie pointed out as they were cruising on by, it uh, spits a little tar in the enemy's face to blind them so he can eat them while it's still alive. You were just educated. That meat is extra juicy, then, because it still has blood flowing through it. Also, but, he's fat. You guys, I'm yeah, so hungry. Get, like, you have to check his cholesterol after that. <laughs> but uh, in, in the middle of all this, while he's trying to like scurry to get away, uh, he drops the can of Barbasol that has all the all the embryos in it, so I don't know. If the sequels didn't go the way that they did, I would call that a big old heaping pile of sequel bait, but none of the fucking movies were ever that smart to use it, whatever. <laughs> I didn't actually see any of the sequels, so do they come back to that? No. It, it's oh. lost in the mud like tears in the rain. No! <laughs> anyway, yeah, Wayne Knight gets fucking eaten. Inside of his automobile, he gets eaten, chewed, and swallowed. Ah, uh, yes. Properly dispatched. Now, we are fucking treated in the next scene to... I watched it just a little bit ago, and it was still breathtaking. They're back at the T-Rex paddock, the fence is off, and this motherfucker comes out. Yes. Another iconic scene, and listen, fellas, this was actually the first movie I ever saw in the movie theaters. I was like three or four. And there's like a nug in the back of my head that I will never shake. I am 30 years old as of this recording. I'm a grown fucking man. And there's something primal and visceral about the T-Rex roar that I can't fucking shake. And when it bashes through the fence and roars as loud as it possibly fucking can, it's the loudest thing in the movie by far. I can't fucking... I just fucking freeze. I can't even get away from it. I don't know what the fuck this is. But it's super effective even still like 30 years later. 
Yeah, I actually also saw this. We talked about this a little bit. I also saw this movie back in the day in the movie theater. I was a little bit older, probably about eight years old. And I'll be honest, I was kind of bored. I don't know. It just didn't do it for me at all. I don't know what was wrong with me. I'm sure it was me, not the movie. But I could not give two shits about this movie when I was young. Oh, you're that guy who went to go see Titanic. Like, this is boring as shit. And then there was a titty. You're like, man, this movie's fucking cool. Yeah, I did see Titanic in theaters too. Uh, it was it was okay, and there was a titty. Dope. Now, <laughs> the T Rex tears the fence down, and as he's coming out, the CG here is it dated? Yes. Does it still give you that fucking primal? Oh fuck! Oh my god! Yes. And then they do so many great uh, shot like switchbacks to the actual like. For real, for real, scale size animatronic T Rex, and my God, is it a sight to see! Whenever uh, it's, I know I'm jumping ahead just for a sec. Ian Malcolm gets out and he's like, "Hey, hey, hey!" and shines a flashlight at the T Rex to try to get its attention to chase him. Oh, it's it a flare. Lights up. No, no, well then I guess it was. Uh, You're thinking of the bit where the it gets real close to the kids' jeep and they have that old flashlight they found in the back, and like oh, when yeah. it's peering through the window, the light shines on its iris and you can see it contract and go back. No, that's that's a really badass scene. But that's not what I'm thinking about. Maybe it was just in the headlights, and they're like, hey, hey, and they're waving the flare, and it cuts to the T-Rex, and the T-Rex looks at them and roars, and it's the animatronic, and it's doing it, and you can see the depth in the throat. You can see. As it roars, like the slight vibration of the head shaking, all these things, that looks so fucking real that it's chilling. It's incredibly impressive. And I'm like staring at the wall right now. Definitely need therapy of this movie. And it's just so ineffective. I, I love this movie. I do. Even though I still have that fucking primal fear of this bullshit because my parents were so cool to bring me when I was three or four. That, that aside... Fear. I don't know what it is, man. I hear like a raptor go, Hurt! and I'm just like, oh, man, I do it the doo-doo. <laughs> <laughs> so this is when the movie really kicks into like full-blown like action survivor movie. Yeah. Maximum Overdrive, TM. Are you just naming movies now? Are you just name dropping? The Hunt for Red October, as they say. <laughs> 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 so... The T-Rex is out. The children are scared. He's fucking with them. The lawyer has ran away to hide in the toilet. Uh, Grant has an idea. He's like, I'll pull them away. He grabs a flare. He starts waving it. It chases the flare. Malcolm, not knowing what uh, Grant has planned, tries to do the same thing, but foolishly runs. And the T-Rex is like, bud, I'm like a big puppy. I'm going to chase you. Chases him all the way to the bathroom, goes to bite him, knocks him through the wall, unconscious, he makes a little <laughs> noise, and he eats a man who is shitting. And I thought this was really weird. Why did the lawyer go in there, sit on the toilet, and then take his pants down? Um, I don't remember his pants being down, but hey, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah, I was thinking it was just like, all right, I'm gonna run and hide in this bathroom. All right, hiding in the bathroom. I kind of have to poop right now, though. <laughs> go. I mean, you know, you get that level of scared, your bowels loosen. He was just taking care of business. He thought he was safe, you know, because he had all that fresh meat out there for a distraction. He's like, you know what? I feel safe enough to just drop this dookie. Maybe it was a strategic thing. Like, you know, if I have to run again, <laughs> I'd be able to run faster if I was like, you know, six ounces lighter. Looks like he's off to take a strategic shit. Well, he's, he's about to weigh a lot less because he gets it up. Yeah, yeah. definitely chewed like, and swallowed again. Now, this is definitely the most visceral death so far because, you know, Nedry got it bad. But, like, it's technically off screen. You just, you know, it's implied. Now, this dude gets eat it on screen, scooped up, chewed, swallowed, even shaken around. You yeah, know, not stirred. It's rough, but, you know, even T-Rex hates lawyers. And that's the moral <laughs> of the story. <laughs> Fuck exactly. that guy. He goes back to finish off the children's and he's like, monch, monch. And fucking Dr. Grant's like, we got to get out of here. And the little girl screams so loud. He's oh, like, my Shut God. The fuck fucking up. so much screaming. Yes, man. Like they would have had it. The T-Rex was busy munching on the lawyer. You know, they could have just like escaped right there. And no, <laughs> she just freaks out. Whatever. Why can't you just shit yourself like the lawyer? At least we could have cleaned it up later. Fucking Dakota Fanning. <laughs> 
<laughs> this isn't Dakota Fanning. She has nothing to do with this role, but I just remember like an hour and 40 minutes of the worst part of uh, the War of the Worlds being Dakota Fanning screaming. And I'll never piece forget of, her for it. Piece of trivia, both directed by Steven Spielberg. Oh, have the mighty have fallen. Yeah, it happens. But now the T-Rex is trying to eat him. He's like, don't move. He can't see if you don't move, but he's going <laughs> to eat this whole ass car and then throw it over a cliff. Yeah. There's a lot of suspension of disbelief in here. Like, it's one of those things where you're just like, eh, let it happen. Because if you think about it, it doesn't work. Because not only did they not stand still, they went around the car and hopped up on, like, the little embankment right in front of the T-Rex. Just yeah. right there. What is this supposed to be even? Like, I thought it might have been, like, the top of a dam or something. Yeah, just don't think about it because the T-Rex walked out of that. Like, it was flushed to the ground. But then they hop inside and suddenly it's like a 80-foot drop into, like, more wildlife? Oversight? Me, whatever. Tim's a I tree. Know. I don't know. Uh, We're back in the Jeep. Well, at least it's not in the tree. <laughs> the kid's dead now. Ah, uh, we wish. <laughs> it's just Grant's just over there punching kids he doesn't like, like muffins. <laughs> and then... <laughs> I'm getting the chronological order of things mixed up a little bit. At what point did the little boy end up in a tree? Kids in the car get squished. Car gets pushed over the thing and then gets stuck in the tree. There you go. So the and tree then Grant was has to crawl up and get him. Correct. So the tree was below them or the T-Rex yes. just like, okay, all right. L I, I listen, believe you. That explorer found a way. It <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, but they do find Jeff Goldblum. Uh, he's just laying there injured in the wreckage, and they end up sexually. taking him back to the yeah, sexily, sexily laying there in the wreckage with a with a sexy tourniquet on his leg. This <laughs> then is sexy one of, laying in the jeep. Yeah. yeah, that's actually one of my favorite bits because they're uh, Laura Dern and Muldoon are still like looking around for whatever, and he's sitting in the jeep. Of course, he's injured, can't move. He's just biding his time, and then he's just like, boom. He's like, fuck. That's an impact trimmer. I'm uh, I'm fairly alarmed. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that brief escalation of just like, okay, I guess I'm okay to, I'm not okay. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get in the Jeep. Let's go faster. Go fast. Yes, go fast. Go much faster. And they do. And again, the T-Rex chases it like a little puppy, busting this through a, a tree. Scene. This is a fun scene. It's it's such a good scene because he leans on the uh, the gear shift and the guy's like, move. And he's like, I can't. I'm, I'm, I, I need to recline fully to be sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it is a priority but yeah the t-rex gives up because he can run 30 miles an hour but not for long and he was like fuck this i'm tired and just ate a lawyer so i'm good he doesn't have that lung capacity and then i guess the kids they aren't all right but they're all right you know they're a little shaken up and dr grant takes them to like this tree in the middle of nowhere like oh, we'll just camp up here because we have no choice yeah might as well right it's a tree it'll be safe don't worry, it's not like some giant dinosaur is going to sneeze on you. That's so gross. It's so bad. Because it's just like directly on her and nobody else. Yep. <laughs> it's like the wrong move and she got like Nickelodeon slime. Just... Oh. So that's where they stay the night. The next morning they wake up and yeah, there's a little... They have a cute little scene with the Brachiosaurus or whatever it is. But then they get out of there and... Dr. Grant finds, like, a clutch of hatched dinosaur eggs, and this is where yeah. we should be speaking. Yeah, the kid's like, were those bird eggs? And Grant's like, this isn't fucking bird park, you jackass. That was good. That was really good. Speaking of bird park, what I've got today is from North Park Beer Company out of San Diego, California. I've got bird park. It's a bohemian pilsner, 4.7% uh, alcohol by volume. Smells real grassy. There's a little bit of malty sweetness that's very prominent, but the thing is, it's not that deep. It's just like one note that I feel is just like right up front, and then the rest is just like generic beer flavor. I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> no, like there's a little bit of hops in there, just a like a, a hint of it. For a Bohemian-style Pilsner, I really want a little bit more hops. I want a little bit more body like, this isn't bad. It's just I feel like if they just turned every ingredient that they have up a little bit, just give us a little bit more, bring that alcohol up to, like, maybe 5.5% instead of the 4.7, use a little bit more grain in the bill. 
up the hops and give me a little bit more of the spicy hops. I know this has like saws in it, but give me a little bit of like the Amarillo or something like that that you might find in like an IPA. Give me something like that. As it is, it's fine. It's just a little underwhelming. You know what's you know not what? underwhelming? The amount of action now coming our way. It's like the last 20 minutes of movie and it's all fucking dinosaurs, all yep. fucking action. Yeah, everybody has to get back to the visitor center so they can escape. You know, time is running out. Dinosaurs are everywhere. So we're like flash cutting back and forth. We catch up to like Muldoon, Hammond, and Samuel L. Jackson, Laura Dern. They're like, what do we fucking do? Nedry fucked up everything. And Samuel L. Jackson's just like, listen, I am tired of these motherfucking dinosaurs in this motherfucking park. I'm just going to go press some buttons. I'll be back in five. See yeah. you later. And inevitably, Laura Dern and Muldoon is like, you know, we should go press some buttons too. Because he's taking more than three minutes. He said it was going to be three minutes. Yeah. Like, I get that's like a hyperbole. Like, yeah, I can just, you know, I fix it in no time. That kind of thing. But, like, it took Laura Dern and Muldoon to trace his footsteps to get back there. Like, I don't know, like, most of that evening. Yeah, I don't know. He said it was across the eye or across the park. I feel like that would have taken longer than three minutes, no matter what your method of transport. I don't think he had a helicopter or anything like mm. that. I don't know. I don't see three minutes being realistic. Yeah, but we get two things happen at the same time. So Laura Dern and Muldoon, they split up. Muldoon realizes they're being hunted by the Velociraptor. So he takes out his spaz shotgun and he starts to hunt the hunter. Here's where we get actually another one of those classic like, man, this movie's full of classic, just iconic dialogue. Yeah. So he's waiting there with his shotgun, getting his eyes on one of these velociraptors that's been sort of stalking him. While Laura Dern is in the compound looking for like the power room station thing so we can get the power to the whole fucking island back on, get security, get lights, get all the, the fences electrified and everything again. Let's get some order around here. Muldoon's out there with a shotgun and he gets crept up upon. Clever girl. There it is. And yep. actually, that's super violent, too, even though it's obscured by the leaves or whatever, because, you know, got to keep it not PG-13, but, you know. No, this is brutal. Enough. It's fucking graphic. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, the way the Velociraptor's, like, neck just jostles, you know, just tearing his face off his face. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just one of those things, you know. He's just fucking ripped. So the Velociraptor eats everything except for his thighs because he just respects them. <laughs> no, those are the steam hams. Those are going first. <laughs> While that's going on, Laura turns down the power facility and she's like, I'm going to turn things on. Yeah. But we get a little treat Ham for that. You get Hammond like over the walkie trying to tell her what to do. And he's just so just clunky with it. And then Ian Malcolm, he's just like had enough. He's like, no, that's not sexy enough. <laughs> Give me that. Uh, no. <laughs> what Hammond is trying to do, what Hammond is trying to do is like, I feel like it's like Jeff Bezos trying to instruct someone how to deliver an Amazon package, even though he's never done it himself. Uh, no, just put it on the porch. Just, just do it. You know, step one and done. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and you're right. Uh, Ian Malcolm's like, hey, do you see pipes? Walk toward that direction because that's where they're coming from. Yeah. And meanwhile, the kids and Grant are like running around in the fucking, I guess, the Great Plains of Jurassic Park. And there's a bunch of <laughs> yeah. dinosaurs pulling an Aerosmith. And by God, they're flocking this way. Oh, no. No, not more Aerosmith. Yeah. Well, after all that, you know, they certainly want to miss a thing because, Fuck. you know, it's pretty fucking violent, too. T-Rex comes out of nowhere. They got to hightail it out of there. So they run up on this paddock fence and they're like, you know what? It's turned off. Let's just climb it. We're all big boys and girl. We can do it in no time. And for whatever reason, because movie, whatever yep. reason, Tim just like, I'm just going to stay up here because wing. I can't climb down. I am scared. I don't know. <laughs> Question mark. Yeah. Jumper, you're gonna die, Tim. And he's like, I guess I'll just. <laughs> yeah, like you see Listen. the you see the green light come on, and you know that it's about to actually get electrified. And he's just like, I can't do anything. Uh. Listen, Sam Neil was nowhere near that fucking kid. So when he told him to jump, I'd be pretty questionable about that too, because like he's just gonna drop like a rock. He's not Spider Man or anything. <laughs> I Would mean, you have I, a broken leg or like have your armpits blow out from electricity. Yeah. Like your choices are maybe I get hurt on the way down, you know, broken leg, worst case scenario, or I am bacon. 
I mean, like, I guess when he's on the way back, he's like, hey, Hammond, I got your grandkids. One's a little flame kissed. It's okay. Mm. He's still good. He's still good. <laughs> yeah, but an old girl turns on the power. The kid gets crisped. And she's like, I think everything's going to be okay. But it's not because there's a fucking raptor hiding behind a bunch of cords. Why? He's been waiting. Uh, yeah, they're smart. They're intelligent yeah. creatures. They can even Whatever. open doors. Clever. <laughs> They can they can open doors with like the long handles. Like, what if every one of them just like the old fashioned round ones? What are you gonna do? He could like wrap his little talon around it. But yeah, she gets out of there. We get a butt shot of uh, old girl as she's like trying to run to Grant. She's like, Grant, I love you. Help me! And the kids are eating junk food. And there's a cool fucking little mural of a raptor. And then guess what? A raptor walks into the room and its shadow matches perfect. And then it turns it's like. I want to eat some kids. And you can tell that little Timmy was scared because his jello was shaking. Yeah, at, at this point... I thought that was just know, a jello jiggler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this point, we are supposed to have the idea that, you know, everything's okay. It's resolved. The power's back on. The kids are in the cafeteria eating whatever. Uh, you know, Laura Dern and Dr. Grant, whatever his name is, is all reunited. Everything's good, aside from the half dozen or so people that have been mauled. Mulligan. But, yeah, it's not okay, because there are raptors running about. Yeah, the kids get chased into the kitchen. They, they hide in, like, this ridiculous place where there's clearly no exit but one. And they get trapped. And I'm just like, well, you brought this on yourself. But, fortunately, this is one of the coolest fucking scenes in the movie. As they're, like, hiding behind all this stainless kitchenware and stuff like that, you know, the raptors are trying to feel out the opening, the door, like, sniffing around, you know, blowing, like, little fog things on the window. They both come in, they're, like, chewing on each other, like, ah, I'm gonna get one, you're gonna get the other, ah. Yeah, and there's a reflection, and the raptor goes, I'm gonna get you, and it's a really cool, like, it throws its claws out and fucking headlong, knocks itself out, some bitch done knocked itself cold, and the other one jumps in the <laughs> freezer trying to eat little Timmy. The little girl had a solid idea. Yeah. Like, I'm going to trick this one, and he's going to get knocked out, and we're going to be free. Tim's like, I'm going to run in the freezer. <laughs> uh, the oh, boy... my God. Tim is Morty. <laughs> <laughs> the boy is consistently the worst decision maker in the whole movie. Oh, for sure. Like, the fact that he's still alive at all is amazing. <laughs> the fact but... that he's using his hands after 10,000 <laughs> volts just burnt them off. Uh, but... This little bit of a scene, not scene even, just like a, a snippet of a clip that I think is really cool during that kitchen scene. The little girl sort of peeks through the, you know, the pots and pans like the, the thing. And we see the raptor like dragging his claw on the ground and you hear that sound. The Foley artist did some good work here because the sound of that claw dragging across the ground is enough to send chills through you. Yeah. At least it was for me. That did more for me than the, the T-Rex roar, to be honest. I love the fact that, like, as they're pilfering around the kitchen, he starts tapping his toe, his toenail, mm -hmm. as he's trying to, like, figure this whole situation out. Like, I, I can smell him. I can't see him. All right. Where are you? And they run out. They run into Dr. Grant and Laura Dern. Dr. Grant has a shotgun. He's like, I know how to use this. Two seconds later, didn't land a fucking shot on anything. They run to the computer room. Like the uh, brains of the operation, they're like, "Okay, what do we? What can we do? Uh, you're a hacker, kid. Go hack some stuff. We need these locks relocked. Let's do it." And they're like, "Oh, we can't hold these doors. You got to hold those doors. I can't hold these doors. Please hold, hold that door. door. Hold the door. Hold the door." She does her little hacky thing, and it ends up working. I I don't know. I guess they only briefly mention that she's like a computer hacker at one point in the beginning, but it comes into play right here when they're trying to. What are they doing? Locking the doors? I... Yeah, they're just trying to get the, the doors relocked, you know, security all ship shape. And then for some reason, like, I don't know, it's more implied because never shown. I don't know if the Velociraptor jumped through the window to get to them or is it because Alan shot the shotgun and broke the window, then he got in? Long story short, they scurry up a ladder into the ceiling to get away. Yeah, one, yeah, I don't know. Like, I just hear, they're coming through the glass. I don't know. You can't explain it. Shoot her! So as they try to escape through the vent, they crawl for a good little bit, and they get to the other side, and there's just a fucking raptor waiting on them, and instead of going back into the vent, they decide it's going to be a brilliant idea to jump onto a T-Rex skeleton. Yeah, I saw that, and I was like, eh, it might have been a better idea to just turn back around. I don't know. 
Dr. Grant's like, it's totally unsafe, but it's totally cool. It is totally legal and totally cool. But yeah, they do jump down on this T-Rex skeleton, which is something that I've always wanted to do. Yeah, it's one of those things where like all the pawn pieces are just kind of scurrying around. Raptors jump around. The skeleton breaks, and they're all split up in their own like little small universes that are all just in danger at the moment. And they're yeah. they're finally kind of cornered by these two Velociraptors, and oh boy, T Rex just jumps in and saves the day because she was on their team. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I don't know. T Rex snuck up into this room. Like how it, it can't even fit into the goddamn room number one. But whatever. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Also, it's just there. Also, and... we've seen before that you know if the T Rex is walking, there's like a stomp. You have what the what the the guy call it before? It's like an uh, impact trimmer. Impact tremors. There's no fucking impact tremors here this time. He is just creeping. The T Rex saves the day, and you're like, that's weird. All <laughs> right, let's leave. And whatever, uh, Hammond's just already outside in a Jeep, also yeah. waiting for them. Like, that's like, ah, it's all over. Ah. What's his name's like? I don't think I'm going to be signing off on your park. And he's just like, I'm not either. <laughs> Hammond did kind of seem like he was still waiting on the approval. Like, you know, this was just like, a, you know, just, you know, a little bug in the system. Don't worry about it. We'll fix it next time. <laughs> well, luckily that lawyer's not going to fuck me over. Well, they still haven't fixed it in the five movies after. <laughs> True. true. But this is what I was talking about before. That final scene where they're flying away on the helicopter and you've got Dr. Grant, you know, with his arms around the grandkids and Laura Dern's just looking at him like, hey, hey, you're going to put one of those in me? Then he just like jams Tim right up in there. Yeah. There you go. Oh, not that one. That one's <laughs> annoying. Yeah, he's, uh, he's also uh, a little crispy. So. Yeah. Quispy. Quispy. Uh, and of course, you know, the survivors, they Right into the sunset. You know, everything's cool. Everything's legal. I think there's a whole lot not legal back there, but I don't know about the Costa Rican federal laws. Okay, so, like I said earlier, there's nothing that I can say that hasn't been said about this movie before. It's brilliant. It's a good time. It might be showing its age a tad, but you know what? It's still a fun ride. I've seen this movie probably dozens of times, even a couple times in the theater. And I'll fucking do it again. <laughs> this was my third time seeing this. I saw it in the theaters in 1993. I also saw this once when I was probably like 25. And I remember thinking it was actually pretty good. This time really paying attention to it. This is really good. Uh, the effects look really good. It's just it's got this feel of wonder to it that you don't get a whole lot. You only really get when you're actually out in the world and you see something badass. You get that here. The score is phenomenal. There are a few qualms that I have here or there, but nothing that's deal-breaking. It's a great film. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm going to endorse the park, but I'm definitely <laughs> going to endorse the movie. <laughs> Other than, you know, the CG now being noticeably a little dated. Dude, this is like such a good fucking movie. Like, you can sit down and watch it and just be amazed throughout and like you said chan there's just moments of wonder like getting to see that dinosaur on screen when it's the practical effect that big and just moving and it just like you said eric can inspire you know either awe or fear it's wonderful job well done there you have it that's Jurassic park if you have any strong feelings about the movie or the show leave it in the comment section below definitely make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons and bash that bell icon so you know next time we got another one of these brewing. Get up there and follow us on all of our different social medias. We get that Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter. <laughs> Thanks to the Anchor app. We're out here on Spotify and uh, YouTube and what's the other one? Fucking Apple Podcast. We got a lot of shit going on. There's no reason you guys ain't checking us out. You know, if you don't check us out, we're going to have to like maybe steal some of your DNA, clone you, and then put you on display for money. <laughs>